nightmare for you. We will bring the regular assembly meeting uh, for August 21st to order. Mr. Smith, will you lead us in the flag salute? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Jones, will you do our land acknowledgement? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we would like to acknowledge that the city and borough of Juneau was on Clinkett land and wish to honor the indigenous people of this land. For more than 10,000 years, Alaska Native people have been and continue to be integral to the well being of our community. We are grateful to be in this place, a part of this community, and to honor the culture, traditions, and resilience of the Clinkett people. Gunashish. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Madam Clerk, will you call roll? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Bryson. Present. Ms. Hale. Here. Ms. Hughes Scandies. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Ms. Wall is not present. She did not think that she might be present, but I'm checking Zoom right now and I do not see it down there. Um Balaki Dog is also absent. Ms. Gladyshevsky. Here. And Mayor Weldon. Here. The quorum is present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Our special order of business. First, we have the Senior Citizens uh, Proclamation. So Senior Citizens Day 2023. Whereas Alaska has the fast and growing senior population per capita, and whereas older Alaskans make economic con contribute Contributions that benefit people of all ages, including unpaid work as caregivers, participation in the labor force beyond typical retirement age, and marketplace spending that supports thousands of jobs while also generating substantial tax revenue. And whereas Geno seniors should be celebrated and recognized for their contributions to our community with their insightful approach to problem solving as care providers, as local volunteers, as keepers of family and community memory, and whereas we support Alaskans and efforts to improve the livability of our community for people of all ages as an AARP age-friendly community. Now, therefore, I, Beth A. Weldon, Mayor of the City and Borough of Juneau, Alaska, on behalf of the City and Borough Assembly, do hereby proclaim August 21st, 2023, as Senior Citizens Day, and encourage the people of Juneau to show their gratitude and appreciation for the many contributions of elder in our community and across Alaska. Happy Senior Citizen Day. Uh, Ms. Hale, as liaison to Jay Koa, you want to say a few words? I would, I would, I would love to, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I was really struck as I read the, uh, the, the uh, proclamation by that third, whereas keepers of family and community memory. And I think this is a, this is probably the, the greatest benefit I have felt with the, our seniors in our community. They are our bedrock. They have been here for a long time. They can point us to things that we don't realize because we haven't been there quite as long. Although I'm sort of moving into that territory myself now. So um, they're highly engaged in our community and they work for our community. And yes, they're wonderful for our economy. And more and more seniors are choosing to stay in Juneau um, doing something like Riverbend was a great action by the assembly to help support that. And we need to keep thinking more and more how to support our seniors. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Well said, Ms. Hale. Um, and also, as we come into election time, we have to remember that our seniors are most often our volunteers that run our elections for us. Mr. Jones. Um, as the oldest member on this diocese, um, I hope you'll show your support of senior citizens by agreeing with everything I say tonight. <laughs> don't, don't say much and it will happen. <laughs> Touché. That's why that's returned. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, instructions for public participation. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. So we did not have anyone sign up to testify via Zoom. Um, for those members in the audience that are here tonight, if you wish to testify, the sign up sheet is at the back of the room. And um, we will have participation on non-agenda items at the beginning of the meeting and followed by um, the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, brings us to approval of minutes. Ms. Hale. Uh, well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, I move that the assembly approve the June 26, 2023 special assembly minutes. Um, and I ask for unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, those minutes are approved. Mr. Manager, do you have any agenda changes? No agenda changes. Thank you. Um, brings us to public participation on non-agenda items. All right, uh, can we have uh, Bill Laity come on up and uh, please state your name and area of the town you live in and you have three minutes. And Madam Clerk, are you timing that for me? Working, working. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Bill Leedy, 227 Gaston Avenue. As you approach the final item on your tonight's agenda, please stop and think of the extraordinary opportunity this presents you to craft a new, a novel and synergistic resolution or other vehicle by which we, the people of Juneau and our government can consider an even larger question. Shall the citizens and its government allow the cruise ship industry to continue burning 200 million gallons of fossil fuel per year, per season on the ships alone, plus probably another 20 to 50 million gallons of fossil fuel per season, putting about three and a half million tons of CO2 in Earth's atmosphere. How can we organize a community conversation about that question? What are our options? To severely limit the cruise ship industry in some way, number of ships, the size of ships, tax the fuel, carbon taxes, shut down the entire industry until all their ships are operating on carbon neutral or greenhouse gas emission free fuels or accelerate the green corridor. We've talked about this before, and you know Alex Pierce is your expert on the green corridor. I was on the advisory committee for the Pacific Northwest Hydrogen Hub, by which they, Washington and Oregon, were applying for a billion and a quarter of DOE federal money by which to build a hydrogen hub. I advised them that there may be a very large potential market for the cruise ship industry in Southeast Alaska for clean greenhouse gas emission hydrogen fuel made in the Pacific Northwest to fuel those ships on the way up here. And our mayor was kind enough to write a letter to the Pacific Northwest Hydrogen Association encouraging them to consider converting the Southeast Alaska cruise ship industry to clean fuel. Maybe it's liquid hydrogen, maybe it's methanol, we don't know, to accelerate the green corridor. So as you contemplate the, the uh, uh, Planning Commission decision before you tonight, please think about how also we can have a community conversation on a much bigger and urgent question. You know the news, it's urgent. Thank you. Thank you, any questions? Ms. Glashevsky. Just a quick question, Mr. Leedy. The when you were on, you were on a committee hydrogen hub something is that over is that still going just to what's happening with that i was Your... on the advisory committee for the pacific northwest hydrogen hub full application for a billion and a quarter federal money that uh, a full application was submitted april 6th 7th doe does not tell us any clues as to when they're going to offer a decision about who which of the hub applications, there were 19, will be selected for negotiation of an award. So we don't know. The advisory committee still exists. 
I can still communicate with those folks. I don't know what's going to happen after the decision comes out. So you're waiting to hear from about what that what happens to the application. Everybody's waiting. Yeah. To hear. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you for your testimony tonight. <laughs> Is there anybody else that wants to speak on non-agenda items that didn't get a chance to sign up? Seeing none in the room, we will move on to our consent agenda. Any public requests for consent agenda changes other than ordinances for introduction? Any assembly requests for consent agenda changes? Mr. Jones. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to pull item number seven, resolution 3035. All right, thank you. Anything further? I would like to pull resolution 3030 also to put it to public hearing. That's number six. Number six. Thank you, Madam Glashevsky. Thank you. Uh, Assembly action, Ms. Glashevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the consent agenda as amended, um, removing items six and seven. I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none. So move. So we will deal. Now we're moving on to public hearing and we will deal with item six first. Um, and the reason I pulled this just in case anybody wanted to uh, testify for it and also to correct, I said in the radio this morning that the short term, how the short that people that use this grant um, couldn't have a short term rental for five years. I was mistaken and it's still at three years. So with that, Madam Clerk, will you talk about it? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is resolution 3030, a resolution amending the accessory apartment grant incentive program criteria. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. The, the accessory dwelling unit grant program was created to encourage homeowners to add an accessory dwelling unit to their home, furthering the creation of affordable housing in the community. A pilot program to provide $6,000 grants to homeowners was established in 2015, followed by a five-year extension of the program that ended June 30, 2023. At the August 7, 2023 meeting of the Assembly Committee of the Whole, the committee voted to forward Resolution 3030 to the full Assembly for introduction and approval. This resolution does two things, changes the official name of the program to the Accessory Dwelling Unit Grant Program and increases the amount of grant funding to that each recipient can receive for the creation of an ADU from $6,000 to $13,500. I recommend you adopt this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this resolution? Seeing none, we'll bring it to the assembly. Mr. Bryson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the assembly adopt resolution 3030, amending the accessory apartment grant incentive program criteria and ask for unanimous consent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bryson. Ms. Gladyshevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I object. Uh, I would like to offer an amendment. Um, Go ahead. For uh, on page three of four of the uh, ordinance, which is page 21. Uh, Line 95, it says three years. I would change three to five years. And I'd uh, speak to my amendment. Um, um, certainly. We talked about this uh, back and forth. And, and um, obviously, the mayor thought it was five. I would like it to be five. This is um, public money to be used to create apartments, which is a terrific thing. Uh, it's a grant. It's not a loan. And um, I think for a period of five years, it's reasonable to expect that the people who get this grant um, don't put that apartment out for a short term rental. Um, I just think, again, it's it's public money. It's uh, we are trying the, pur the purpose and the purpose in the in the whereas clauses is to create housing for Juno residents and any kind any housing is good. And I and I'd like accessory housing. Um, and uh, I, I support this. I'd, I'd like us to help citizens create more housing. And again, it's a grant, um, not a loan. And I think it's a reasonable requirement to ask that the folks who get that grant not put it onto a short-term rental market for a period of five years. Thank you, Ms. Glashevsky. Any objections? Ms. Hale. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I 
completely appreciate Ms. Glashevsky's sentiments, but the, the uh, understanding that I have been gleaning from trying to build more housing is that when you put restrictions on things, then, then you build less housing. So um, communities that have a lot of rules and have a lot of restrictions in place are much less successful overall at building housing. Um, I, I think that I, I believe a, a study, the study that was done about our housing market said something like the assembly should be prepared to basically drop $50,000 for each housing unit that we want built. So this grant program is a, a very small part of that. And um, I think that we need to accelerate housing uh, building rather than put requirements in place. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hale. Mr. Bryson. Um, I, I thought about this as well. Uh, I've seen some of the, the email also. Is three years the right answer? Is five years the right answer? Um, I'm going to have to side with Ms. Hale on this one. Uh, I do believe that three years is the right answer. And one of the reasons is, as Ms. Hale stated, if we reduce restrictions, could this being a short-term rental help maybe help bridge a financial gap? So the whole point is we want as many of these to be made as possible. The less restrictions we put on them, the more we'll have will be the outcome. And uh, it just becomes a, a financial decision at some point. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bryces. Anybody else? Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you. Um, I would object. I think uh, five years. Um, it would be easy for this assembly to go back in a year and you had no applicants. And the reason you had no applicants was the three or five years, you could change it back. Um, if you keep it at three, uh, you may uh, gain some or you may lose some, but you have, a, you have the opportunity. Um, to one of the emails that we received uh, questioning this program, uh, I put it back to that person this way that um, if you treated this grant as a business, um, if you put a product on the market and nobody buys it, then you change it. If people still apply, then you get what you want. Um, and so far, having no restrictions on the money that the city's put out so far, we've seen some improvement in housing, but not a lot. Um, and so, um, uh, putting a restrictions on, I don't find onerous at all. And certainly we could change it. Um, and if you get no applicants in a year, you change it. If you get lots of applicants, then maybe, you know, you did it right, but, to uh, try to guess what you're going to get when you're putting a new product. Didn't leave it, uh, and put in the five years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Glashevsky. Just briefly, um, one of the speakers spoke about, we want to create as many units as possible. And again, I would go to the first whereas, to create more housing for young families, workers, and seniors. That's the purpose of this. Um, it's not to create short-term rentals. Um, so, I, you know, that's, that's the brief statement to reply, thanks. Thank you. Um, we have an amendment and objection. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. For amendment number one to change on page three of four of the resolution, line 95, three years to make it five years. Ms. Glanishevsky. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bryson. No. Ms. Hale. No. Ms. Hughes Scandies? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Uh, Madam Mayor? Yes. Motion carries five yeas, two nays. Okay, well, that brings us back to the main motion. Any objection to the main motion as amended? Seeing none, that motion passes. So that brings us to item seven, resolution 3035, Madam Clerk.
Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is resolution 3035, a resolution approving the issuance of the Public Finance Authority Revenue Bonds Series 2023 Aurora Integrated Oncology Foundation in a maximum aggregate par amount not to exceed $250 million. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. The Aurora Integrated Oncology Foundation and local oncologist Dr. Eugene Huang approached the assembly seeking support for their endeavor to issue tax exempt bonds through the Federal Public Finance Authority. The foundation's goal is to consolidate oncology services and facilities in a few Alaska cities and towns in order to provide more cohesive and comprehensive services to the residents in those locations. In order to obtain funding through the Public Finance Authority, the local government must approve a resolution supporting the organization and hold a Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act, or TEFRA, hearing. A TEFRA hearing was held today on August 21st, 2023 at 2 p.m. in City Hall Conference Room, room 224 and via Zoom. There was no public comment received. This resolution does not obligate CBJ financially in any way, nor does it impact CBJ property taxes. The Assembly Committee of the Whole heard an update and discussed this issue at its meeting on June 26 and forwarded this resolution to the body. I recommend the Assembly approve this resolution if you wish to support the Foundation's effort to obtain funding from the Public Finance Authority. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this resolution? Uh, seeing none. Um, actually, I'm going to go to you, Madam Attorney, because you have some news for us that might find it useful for us today with anchorages. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Madam Mayor. Uh, it, it looks like Anchorage did pass their resolution um, and then added an amendment uh, to theirs which would also be a possibility for this one if the assembly wanted to pass it. So. Okay, and we have the amendment if anybody wants to look at it real quickly before we vote on it. Are you offering it? No, I'm just having you look at it real quickly to see if anybody wants to offer it. <laughs> Again, this is just what Anchorage passed with this amendment. So we'll take a one minute at ease while people read it. Are we taking an What happened to the, there was a clause in here that said, what happened to the clause that was in here? Are we at ease can I ask one question? No, yeah, you're gonna have to ask it. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to read it? All right, so before we go to uh, action, I'm sure we, a couple of people have said they had questions. Mr. Jones, you had questions. And then Ms. Hughes-Gandies, and then Ms. Glasheps. How many questions am I allowed, Madam Mayor? You get one. It's your turn this time around one. <laughs> okay. Um, just for the record, I was not here at the meeting in June. Um, I did send an email to the attorney yesterday. I uh, got a very lengthy response back. Um, so today I read the packet from the committee, the whole meeting, and I listened to the video. So I listened to the discussion that was done. Um, and my major objection um, is that if I understand the uh, TEFRA issue, Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982, which is a pretty old one. Um, it said that the purpose of the hearing was to give the public an opportunity to provide input on whether the public benefits should be extended. 
And that was pretty much a summary from the Aurora Integrated Oncology paper that was in your packet in uh, June. Um, and I did not see much or anything in either this resolution or the one from Kenai that mentions a public benefit. Um, I think there's an assumption that there's a public benefit because it's keeping medical care and you know, it's, I'm at the age where I'm probably gonna use oncology someday um, if I don't just keel over eventually. Um, but um, I didn't see a lot in here. And I realized that at the, um, in the hearing, it was mentioned that the city had used something like this for Wildfire Court. I believe the city looked at this for the senior center assisted living that's now out there and we rejected it back when Mr. Bartholomew was finance chair. Um, and so uh, our finance director. Uh, so maybe somebody could answer the question in terms of should there be something in here about a public purpose or a public benefit. Um, and a related question, if the TEFRA hearing is to determine that, um, and there was nobody at the hearing, no public member this afternoon, does the June 26th meeting and this meeting fulfill the requirement to have a TEFRA hearing, even though only the December members spoke? So those are two questions. I got into one. Okay. Who's taking these ones? Um, Mayor, thank you. Um, I think that this hearing tonight uh, constitutes the opportunity for the public to comment to the extent they're interested. Uh, I'm not aware that we've had uh, any public uh, comment at any step of the way. Um, I will uh, acknowledge that this is uh, an unusual uh, matter of business for CBJ, uh, but on research, um, in talking to other communities and uh, bond council, um, this is a um, course of action that entities take uh, to avail themselves of uh, the tax exempt financing. Um, and we understand uh, primarily from the testimony of Dr. Huang and uh, his group that the purpose uh, of that is that in the past, entities have used federal tax exempt financing to construct facilities that may not have had uh, community support. In, in terms of uh, public purpose, um, for me personally, uh, the question comes down to, is it plausible that a statewide nonprofit will be more beneficial uh, to the citizens of Alaska uh, in providing oncology services than uh, four or five or more small independent for-profit businesses. And, and to me, that seems plausible that a statewide nonprofit um, would be more successful uh, at providing care services and more successful um, at expanding the, the suite of services. Um, I'm, I'm also encouraged by the appointment of the board. So that was in the packet um, on the 26th. And if I, if I recall correctly, uh, the Anchorage Economic Development Council director, uh, the a, a designee from the Rasmussen Foundation uh, were placed on that board. Um, that said, in order to um, assess the public benefit, you have to look into the future and guess what's going to happen. And I don't know that any of us have a crystal ball. Follow up. <laughs> uh, just one. Uh... I agree. I, I, but one of the questions that the assembly member asked at the committee of the whole meeting was if that group that was in your memo, the five people, uh, were representative of Southeast. The answer was not now, but maybe. Um, and uh, Bill Pope has resigned as the economic director in Anchorage. I don't know when he, when his last day is, but he's no longer there. So I don't know how that helps. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. hughes Scannies. Uh, why don't you go to Ms. Gladyshevsky? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you good, Ms. Hughes Candies? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't think I have a clear and succinct question. I think this is a weird one, and I don't feel like my sort of reservations have been fully met, um, except, of course, we all know it's great to have cancer care in town. But um, I asked at the cow if this could be done another way structurally for this entity, and I think it could, maybe just not as advantageously. Um, I'm chewing on what Mr. Manager said. I think that's plausible that you make a good case for why that would be a public benefit. It's a weird one. Would you like me to move the resolution, Madam Mayor? Certainly. <laughs> I move that the assembly adopt resolution 3035. And I ask unanimous consent. Uh, thank you, Ms. hughes -Gandies. Ms. Gladyshevsky. I would uh, object for the purposes of an amendment, and I, that would be Amendment 1, the piece of paper that we um, got um, adding uh, a Section 3. Nothing in this resolution shall be construed as creating for the city and borough of Juneau an affiliation with or an endorsement of the Public Finance Authority, its agents, or financial products, and uh, changing Section 3 to 4, the effective date. I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection on the amendment? Uh, Mr. Smith and then Mr. Joe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a question maybe for the attorney. Like, it, it, do, do you know why the, the municipality of Anchorage implemented this? I mean, is it necessarily, is it necessary language? Anyway, what is it, do, what is it really, anyway, what is its effect? I think he's asking, what does it do differently than what we already have? <laughs> Madam Mayor, uh, it's it adds just another layer of protection that the assembly is in no way uh, endorsing the public finance authority, which is the which is not the oncology group. It is actually the authority, um, the governmental authority that issues the bonds. It's just. Okay, uh, Ms. Blanchard. And I I thought we had a clause in this resolution that said. Did you change it since the last time we saw it at all? Or was this, is this the version we've always seen, never changed it? M Mr. Ms. Manager. Ms. <laughs> I thought we had something. Mr. Attorney yeah. or Mr. <laughs> Manager. <laughs> Madam Mayor, he is looking for the last one. All right, thank share. you. Uh, mayor, I'm I'm looking at the cow agenda on the 26th, and the deputy mayor's memory is right. There was a clause that we recommended, and we neglected to put that in the the resolution. It it is similar to the one you just discussed, and I'll read it out loud. And that whereas clause read. Whereas the assembly has been asked by Aurora Integrated Oncology Foundation, a Delaware not-for-profit corporation, the borrower, for assistance related to the issuance of certain TEFRA revenue bonds, the statements of fact made in this resolution are based upon representations made by the borrower upon which the assembly has relied. Um, Madam Mayor, I'd like to add that. Uh... One amendment. Um, amendment. Oh, okay. No, I thought I, okay. Because I, when I saw this, I thought we said something like that, I thought, and I couldn't remember the details, but I'd add both of them. Because why not? Uh, let's do one amendment at a time. Mr. Jones. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I object for purpose of a question. Um, to, to my question to the attorney yesterday, um, she mentioned something about, um, the attorney for the hospital was looking at stark issues with us approving this bond. Is that, am I correct? Did you say something about that? And would this amendment have any effect on whatever their concerns might have been? Since the city hospital is owned by the city. His attorney. Uh, excellent question, Mr. Jones. Uh, the the hospital's attorney, who is actually the CBJ's attorney as well, because she's contract uh, for us. 
uh, said at first glance she did not see any issues with Stark or anti-kickback, but that she would be willing to research that further if that was something that the assembly wanted to explore and be 100 percent sure. But but does this amendment help in that analysis? Madam Attorney. Hurt that analysis. I think it's neutral. <laughs> neutral is the answer. All right, so we have an amendment on the table. Do we have objections still? Seeing none, that objection passes. Ms. Gladyshevsky. I would move amendment two. The amendment passes. I would move amendment two and add back the language that had been previously inadvert and that was inadvertently left off this version. And Mr. Uh, Watt read it. Do you do you need it read again? Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you. Um, I just want to object to ask the attorney question. Ms. Glashepty picked hey, up. We're going to stop because do we need that read again or? Not for me. Okay, I'm just making sure that everybody. Okay, Mr. Smith, do you want it read again? Okay. Mr. Manager, would you read that again? Whereas the assembly has been asked by Aurora Integrated Oncology Foundation, a Delaware not-for-profit corporation, the borrower, for assistance related to the issuance of certain TEFRA revenue bonds. Statements of fact made in this resolution are based upon the representations made by the borrower upon which the assembly has relied. All right, thank you. Now, Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you. Um, I've, that was gonna be one of my next questions. So I'm glad Ms. Gladyship to picked up on it. But um, on page two or three, uh, line 63 and 64, I had just in my own mind wondered if that um, was trying to replace the potential amendment was in the manager's um, uh, memo. And so uh, if it was, then maybe that needs to be stricken. If it's not, does that need to remain? Um, or is there any conflict between the two? Madam Attorney, we're working you hard tonight. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I It may be that that actually is part of the language that um, was supplied as an example, and that's why we used it uh, in there. Um, I do not believe that they're in conflict if you have both of them in there. Okay, thank you. All right, any objection to the second amendment? Seeing none, we go back to the main motion as amended. Any objection to that? Seeing none, the motion passes. <laughs> Good luck in your endeavor. <laughs> All right, that brings us back to the regular public hearing. And uh, that is item 10, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Ordinance 2022-06, Version B, A, Z an ordinance appropriating $134,526 to the manager for the design phase of the ramp improvements capital improvement project. Funding provided by the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, Airport Improvement Program Grant. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. This ordinance would appropriate $134,526 in Airport Improvement Program grant funding for the Ramp Improvement CIP. This funding would provide for the design phase of the rehabilitation of large air carrier and air taxi ramps. The local match requirement will be provided by a previously appropriated 1% sales tax funds in the Ramp Improvement CIP. This award increases the $2,017,881 grant appropriated under 2022-06-BM. Airport Board reviewed this request at the July 13, 2023 meeting. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public in the room that wishes to speak to this ordinance? Uh, seeing none, we will bring it back to the assembly. Um, and Ms. Wado is here. If we have questions, Mr. Jones. Want me to move the amendment? I'm, 
I was trying you're, to go. You're out of practice. I was going ahead, so sorry. Um, I would move that the assembly approve ordinance 202206BAZ and ask unanimous consent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there any objection? Seeing none, that ordinance passes. Item 11, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Ordinance 2023-14, Version B, H, an ordinance appropriating $1,795,267 to the manager for the construction phase of the Gate 5 Passenger Boarding Bridge Capital Improvement Project. Funding provided by the Federal Aviation Administration FAA Airport Improvement Program grant. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. This ordinance would appropriate $1,795,266 in Airport Improvement Program grant funding for the Gate 5 Passenger Boarding Bridge CIP. This request would provide for the acquisition, construction, and installation of a new passenger boarding bridge, replacing a 21-year-old inoperable jet bridge. The final grant award documentation was received and the final grant award amount is $1,795,266, $1 less the amount expected during the introduction of this ordinance. The local match requirement will be provided by previously appropriated 1% sales tax funds in the Gate 5 Passenger Boarding Bridge CIP. Airport Board reviewed this request at the July 13, 2023 meeting. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. And um, any member of the public wish to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll bring it to the assembly. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move ordinance 2020. For unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, that ordinance passes. Item 13, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think we're on item 12. 12, sorry. Thank you. Uh, this is ordinance 2023-14 version B, I, an ordinance appropriating up to $19 million to the manager for the construction phase of the ramp improvements capital improvement project. Funding provided by the Federal Aviation Administration Airport Improvement Grant Program. Program grant, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. This ordinance would appropriate up to $19 million in Airport Improvement Program grant funding for the Ramp Improvements CIP. This funding would provide for the construction of a new remain overnight large aircraft parking ramp, rehabilitate deteriorating pavement for large and commercial aircraft parking ramps, repair failing ramp drainage and catch basins, and upgrade ramp lighting. Local match requirement will be provided by previously appropriated CARES Act funding in the Ramp Improvement CIP. Airport Board reviewed this request at the August 10, 2023 meeting. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the assembly. Ms. Hale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move ordinance 2023-14-BI and I ask for unanimous consent. Ms. Glashevsky. I just object for the purposes of a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, a new remain overnight large aircraft parking ramp. Do we have one and we need a new one or we don't have one? And is it does it just mean a flat place or I just wondered what it is? Ms. Watto. Thank you and good evening. Um, the remain overnight, we really do not have one. They're pulling jets that are overnight. We have more jets at night than we do gates. So they're taking them to the back ramp. They're taking them to the hard stands that are located at the cargo area. And they really do need a hard stand. Um, one of the reasons we're redoing the whole ramp. So it is a hard stand that we're trying to put out there for another aircraft overnight. Something we don't have now. Correct. Thank you. That's all. I remove my objection. All right, Mr. Jones. Uh, Ms. Flato, I thought two or three years ago, 
is it gate five or gate six between there and the helicopter? I thought you put a hard pad in there for overnight planes. Ms. Watto. Madam Mayor, um, you have a good memory. It's not a hard stand though. It was just meant as FOD or foreign object debris containment um, between coastal helicopters and gate five, but it was not meant to park jets. Okay. Mr. Manager. Uh, Mayor, for anybody who's listening, a hard stand is a concrete and steel structure that keeps heavy jets from sinking into the pavement. So when you park them overnight, uh, you need to park them on a hard stand in case anybody wanted to know what that was. Thank you very much. So, so my little EV could park there all night, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything further? Any objection? Seeing none. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Wadham. Now on to item 13. Madam Clerk. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Ordinance 2023-14, Version B, A, an ordinance appropriating $60,000 to the manager for the Mount Bradley Trail Reroute and Restoration Project, grant, for, grant funding provided by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, Federal Lands Access Program. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. Parks and Recreation has been awarded an additional $60,000 in grant funding from the Federal Lands Access Program to relocate and reconstruct the Mount Jumbo Trail from Savico Park to the Treadwell Ditch. This award increases the $265,000 grant appropriated under 2021-08-BAMV. A local match requirement of $8,051 will be provided by previously appropriated funds from the Trail Improvement CIP and in-kind labor. Trail Mix is reconstructing the trail and is expected to complete the project in 2024. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the assembly. Ms. Gladyshevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move ordinance 2023-14BA and ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, that motion passes. Item 14, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is ordinance 2023-14 version B large letter B, an ordinance appropriating $2 million to the manager for child care programs and grants, grant funding provided by the state of Alaska. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Mr. Manager, are you taking this? Okay. The City and Borough of Juneau has been awarded $2 million in grant funding for child care programs and grants focused on improving the availability and quality of child care in Juneau. State funding for these grants derives from the American Rescue Plan Act and Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. These funds will be used to expand existing CBJ programs for FY24 and FY25, as well as create an apprenticeship program for child care administrators. No local match is required for this grant. I recommend the assembly take public testimony on this ordinance and refer it to the next regular assembly meeting for action. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any member of the public wish to speak to this ordinance? Ms. Blaszewski. I have a question. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Sure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, it says the student has been awarded two million, and what? So why should we uh, not adopt this today, Mr. Barr? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we've received verbal notice that this uh, fund is get, or this grant is being awarded to us in this amount, but we've yet to receive the actual grant documents. Um, we are 99% sure um, that the funds are coming in the amount that we've been notified, but we simply just haven't received the the final notice of award yet. Can I ask the attorney if uh, there's harm in uh, uh, passing this now and not having to take it up again and write it down and et cetera? Um, if, if the grant doesn't come, we, anyway, can you tell us if it's? Mr. Barr. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you you could pass it tonight. We're not going to spend the money um, regardless. It was just a, a perhaps overly cautious move on my part to delay. Thank you. All right. Um, well, with that, we'll leave it up to Br Mr. Bryson to decide what to do with it. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I move the assembly adopt ordinance 2023-14 BB an ordinance appropriating $2 million to the manager for child care programs and grants, and I ask for unanimous consent. Um, thank you, Mr. Bryson. Mr. Jones. Um, I would object uh, for purpose of a, a question, uh, maybe for Mr. Barr or um, finance department. My understanding is if I read the backup memo uh, that Mr. Barr prepared on July 17th, um, the receipt of this money, uh, and this money has to be spent within this fiscal year before June 30, 2024. And so therefore, money passed in the 2024 budget from general fund would be moved to subsequent years. And so my question is, is that, should that, since this hasn't been to the finance committee, should it, or is that a normal course of business that you would do a deappropriation later, or at the end of the year, you just lapse the money that the that the assembly has already appropriated that you're gonna double dip. Is there any legal requirement? Because my understanding is if this was gonna to go to the next assembly meeting, I was gonna recommend it to stop at the finance committee on the way, because I think there is a finance committee meeting before the next assembly meeting on September 14th to talk about those kinds of issues since you're gonna replace grant money, replace general fund dollars already in the budget. So any advice on how I should vote on that? Um, Mr. Barr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, we have a deappropriation ordinance prepared um, that was introduced uh, and will be, have we introduced it? We talked about this at the last committee of the whole meeting. Um, in any case, we have a deappropriation ordinance prepared um, that we will bring to you to uh, move those funds that you've already adopted from a current fiscal year into next fiscal, fiscal year. Uh, there's a memo in the last committee of the whole packet that goes into some detail about that. Um, and uh, as, as soon as uh, we actually have the grant funds in hand, we'll bring you that deappropriation ordinance for action. Uh, Mr. Watt. Thank you, Mayor. Just clarification, finance committees in September are the 6th and 27th. All right. Thank you for that. And I believe I forgot to ask if there was any member of the audience that wished to speak to this ordinance. So I better ask that now before we move on. Um, with that, we, Mr. Bryson has a motion. Any objection to that motion? Uh, seeing none, that motion passes and We'll do one more if we can before break. <laughs> Item 15. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> this is Ordinance 2023-14 Version B-C, an ordinance appropriating $850,215 to the manager for the Hank Harmon Rifle Range Improvement Capital Improvement Project, grant funding provided by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. This ordinance would appropriate $850,215 for the Hank Harmon Rifle Ranger Improvement CIP. This funding would provide for a series of safety, accessibility, and longevity improvements that will address deferred maintenance needs. The improvements will comply with the National Rifle Association standards and will ensure that all Juneau area hunting and recreational shooters will have continued year-round access to this free facility. Local match requirement will be met through previously appropriated funds in the CIP. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the assembly. Ms. Hughes-Candies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the assembly adopt ordinance 2023-14BC, and I ask for unanimous consent. Is there any objection? Seeing none, that ordinance passes. So let's take a break, six, seven minutes long enough, or do you wanna to go to 10? 
We'll bring the assembly meeting back in order. And we are on item 16, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is ordinance 2023-14 version B, D is in David, an ordinance appropriating $347,340 to the manager as funding for round two of the Healthy and Equitable Communities Grant, grant funding provided by the Alaska Department of Health. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. CBJ has been awarded an additional $347,340 in grant funding from the Alaska Department of Health's Healthy and Equitable Communities Grant. The Healthy and Equitable Communities Unit was established in 2021 in response to widening barriers to health highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic. This award increases the $222,953 grant received in FY23. This grant would improve health outcomes for high-risk and underserved Alaskans by providing funding for the following purposes. CCFR employee mental health training, 45,000. CCFR response van modifications, 45,000. Community health needs assessment, 50,000. Parks and recreations youth sh shelter, Spruce Root House, 75,000. Warming shelter, $132,340. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this ordinance? No. <laughs> and uh, no, we have to come over to this one. And do we have a piece of paper? Madam Mayor, while we're waiting for him to, um, would you just turn the fan just a little bit? At, we're getting a little bit of reverb from your uh, mic. Thank you. Looks great though. All right, please state your name and area town you live in for the record and you have three minutes. Nano Brooks, Ock Bay. Uh, I just had a quick question if anyone could uh, give further detail on what the van modifications were. Um, at this moment in time, you're on testimony, but we will try and pick up that question. So, uh, sorry. sorry. That's, that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anything further? That's all. All right. Thanks. Okay. With that, we will bring it back to the assembly. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would uh, move that the assembly approve ordinance 2023-14-BD and um, would object for purposes of a question or two. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, in the uh, manager's report, it talked about a community health needs assessment for $50,000 which in my estimation won't even hire you the first consultant to design it. Is that to add on to something or is that something already going? Who's doing it? Well, Mr. Barr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the uh, CHNA Community Health Needs Assessment um, was a request that came to us from the Division of Public Health. Um, we are we are planning, um, we're working on an RFP right now uh, to work with them on that. 
um, you are, I think, correct in that uh, this funding will only fund the first stage of a CHNA. Um, I know that there are a handful of CHNAs that uh, two of which have been completed recently and some others that um, the Division of Public Health colleagues statewide are are working on and hoping that we'll get off the ground elsewhere throughout the state right now. Um, so I would say there is a loose effort at a at a statewide effort on this, um, but that's a uh, maybe partially answers your question. But that's that's kind of the the origin story behind this one. Mr. Jones, uh, thank you. Um, and then. Um, the employee mental health training, I assume that's for the CARES part of CCFR. Um, and would they be responding then with the police and you know some of the issues that we've seen about wanting mental health trained folk to respond to the police in certain situations? Mr. Bart. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Yes, uh, Mr. Jones, this uh, training is uh, part of what would be required for the MIH team, the mobile integrated health team, to um, be able to do that type of response as part of underneath the crisis now framework. So to, to be a mobile mobile behavioral crisis response team. Um, and uh, some some calls would be co-responded to with JPD, but the goal is for, for most calls that they're dispatched to to not be co-responses with JPD, but that would be... Um, uh, per dispatch protocols. Okay, we have Ms. Lashevsky, Ms. Hughes-Candies, and Mr. Brace. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have a question. Uh, what's happening with the warming shelter issue with uh, no responses? And if you could just update on that, on that us Mr. on that briefly. Mr. Barr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we are continuing to work uh, with the previous provider uh, for, for last year for the warming shelter services, Resurrection Lutheran Church, uh, their, their pastor and one of their staff members. Um, the church uh, narrowly voted down. So we, let me back up. We put out a request for proposals uh, for the warming shelter contract, which is typical for us. Um, we got no responses to that contract uh, when we reached out to the provider community, the single piece of feedback that we got from almost all of them was that uh, they they were unable to find a space um, to provide that service. Uh, Resurrection Lutheran's response as to why they were unable to uh, bid on the proposal was that uh, the the congregation narrowly voted, voted down providing that service again this year, although they um, hope with some uh, some amendments uh, and further discussion that they may be able to um, uh, past that uh, still. So so we are working with them on that. Uh, we have a couple of backup plans in place um, in case that doesn't pan out. Um, one of one of those, uh, it, the, the one that I'm most hopeful about besides that one is, is a potential collaboration with Clinket and Haida. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about that right now, early stages. Um, and then the last last choice option, if it comes to it, there are a handful of communities that, um, if worst comes to worst, will uh, use a public transit bus, uh, keep it idling overnight, uh, keep the heater on, uh, and allow people who uh, have been unable to get into another shelter around town for whatever reason uh, to uh, stay warm uh, when temperatures necessitate that overnight. Thank you. Um, so Ms. hughes Gandys, Mr. Bryson, and then Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. She asked my question. Mr. Bryson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was curious about the uh, response ban modifications. Mr. Barr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't have all the details on that. My understanding is that it is for um, the uh, sleep off um, center. It's, it's either for sleep off or mobile integrated health. I'm not sure which one. Um, and it is um, most most likely, I'll, I'll follow up and get you more details, Bryson, Mr. Bryson, but it is most likely um, and for to enable uh, easier loading of patients when they're inebriated. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My question's been asked. Okay. Any further questions? All right. We have a motion. Any objection? 
Seeing none, that motion passes. Item 17, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Ordinance 2023-14, Version B, J, an ordinance appropriating $280,000 to the manager for the Safe Streets for All Capital Improvement Project, grant funding provided by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. CBJ has been awarded a $280,000 Safe Streets for All grant from the Federal Highway Administration. The SS4A grant's goal is to develop a holistic, well-defined strategy to prevent roadway fatalities and serious injuries. Funding would be used to conduct a full road safety analysis, taking inventory of all previous crashes, historical trends, conditions, severity of injuries, community and partner input, and other factors throughout the borough. Safety analysis would produce a list of projects and guide the creation and implementation of the comprehensive safety action plan. Once the plan is implemented, CBJ would be eligible for additional road safety grant funding. A local match requirement of $70,000 will be provided by previously appropriated funds in the FY24 CIP Resolution 3016B. Public Works and Facilities Committee reviewed this request at the June 26, 2023 meeting. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we will bring it to the assembly. I think we're on Mr. Smith, correct? <laughs> yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I move ordinance 2023-14BJ and ask for unanimous consent. I'll object for purposes of a question. Um, so who will be doing this analysis? I'm assuming we would hire someone or are we gonna do this in-house? Oh, Ms. Kester is coming down. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We would use a consultant. All right, thank you. That was an easy question. Uh, Mr. Jones has one now that you're here. <laughs> um, I assume the consultant will find um, the Fred Meyer intersection to be number one, uh, but since the state's already involved, are you going to exclude that intersection from any of your analysis or are you gonna continue to include that even though the state theoretically is working on a solution? Ms. Kester. Thank you. Uh, it's a comprehensive safety analysis, so it will include all intersections and we will partner with the state of Alaska. The state was not eligible for the grant, but it'll be an important partner because a lot of our uh, biggest safety issues are on state roads. Anything further? Thank you, Ms. Kester. Uh, with that, we have a motion. Any objection beside mine that I, re I remove? Seeing none, that motion passes. Item 18, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Ordinance 2023-27, an ordinance authorizing the manager to convey approximately 3,030 square feet of property located adjacent to 11260 North Douglas Highway with the legal description of a fraction of Lot 2, U.S. Survey 3559 Beachside to John and Suzanne Rez Reiswig for the fair market value. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. In May 2022, the manager received an application to acquire city property from John and Suzanne Reiswig, the owners of 11260 North Douglas Highway. The application is for roughly 3,000 square feet of city property adjacent to the applicant's 11.6 acre property, and the request is being made in order to secure more road frontage on North Douglas Highway. City property is a large 92-acre parcel transected by North Douglas Highway. The requested property is managed by the Lands Division, and the 2016 Land Management Plan designated this property as retain slash dispose. The plan also states that this property could be utilized for a future residential subdivision. 
Lands, Housing, Economic Development Committee reviewed this request at the May 2nd, 2022 meeting and forwarded the application to the Assembly with a motion of support for disposal. Planning Commission reviewed this application at the September 13, 2022 meeting and recommended approval of this disposal. The Assembly provided a motion in favor of working with John and Suzanne Reiswig towards the disposal of city property at the June 12, 2023 meeting. An appraisal was completed in March of 2023, which valued the property at $7,600. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the Assembly. Ms. Hale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move ordinance 2023-27 and I ask for unanimous consent. Thank you, Ms. Hale. I'll object for purposes of a question. Um, so my question is, I'm not quite sure I understand why property that's 11.6 acres needs another 3,000 square feet. So if we granted that, does that um, prevent us from having a driveway there or anything else because our property's next to them? Um, Mayor, I, our property uh, adjacent, uh, the remainder uh, has road frontage itself. Um, it would be a small um, shrinkage of the piece of city property on that side of the highway. I would also note that there is benefit to the city uh, if this land disposal goes through as there are uh, serving, surveying benefits that uh, improve our situation. Well, thank you for that. Anything further? I have another question then, um, which I just forgot, hang on two seconds. Um, Cause you kind of touched on it and, but there's no condition that they have to provide a subdivision or other housing if we give them this piece of property, right? I didn't see that in the ordinance. Um, Mayor, as a, uh, the, if the land disposal goes through, it would require a resubdivision uh, so that a uh, no lot is created that is not legally conforming. Uh, so the uh, there would be a minor subdivision that would go through. I think that. But my question is, but that doesn't force them to build, correct? Madam Mayor, that's correct. Have to rezone. That, that, that's correct. Uh, uh, the sale of the property does not uh, require anyone to construct anything. All right, thank you. Anything further? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, Keep my objection. So, Madam Clerk, you have a motion and an objection. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, for um, Ordinance 2023-27, Ms. Hale. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bryson. Yes. Ms. Hughes Scandies. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Uh, Ms. Gladyshevsky? Yes. And Mayor Weldon? No. Motion carries six to one. Uh, thank you. So moving on, item 19, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is ordinance 2023-34, an ordinance authorizing the Eagle Crest Ski Area to enter into a franchise agreement with Evan and Caitlin Morgan doing business as Pittman's Pub for beer and wine sales. Thank you, um, Madam Clerk, Mr. Manager. This ordinance would authorize the Eagle Crest Ski Area to enter into a franchise agreement with Pittman's Pub LLC to provide beer and wine sales at Eagle Crest Ski Area during the winter season, consistent with the ski area operating calendar. On June 5, 2017, the Assembly adopted Resolution 2793B, authorizing the Eagle Crest Board to approve on a case-by-case -case basis the sale, possession, and consumption of beer, wine, alcoholic ciders, and other similar malt beverages in connection with a valid permit issued under City and Borough of Juneau Code of Regulations, Title 11, Chapter 7, with a licensed vendor holding a valid liquor license issued by the state of Alaska. 
Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund prohibits CBJ from issuing leases at Eagle Crest. However, CBJ can grant a franchise agreement as a mechanism to formalize a business relationship. Eagle Crest solicited a request for interest, RFI 23174, and received no responses. After the solicitation closed, Eagle Crest continued to look for suitable vendors and was contacted by two interested parties. After pursuing the opportunities further, Pittman's Pub LLC was the only remaining interested party. This ordinance would allow Pittman's Pub to operate for five consecutive winter seasons. I recommend you adopt this ordinance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak to this ordinance? Seeing none, um, we do have Mr. Scanlon here. If we have questions for him, we will bring it back to the assembly. Uh, Ms. Glashevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move ordinance 2023-34 and ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I sent a pretty long email Yesterday, uh, Mr. Scanlon responded while we were in this meeting, so I haven't had a chance to review all of his answers. Um, but um, in the manager's report, he talked about uh, this, the ordinance that passed when I was on the assembly that allowed Eagle Crest to uh, sell beer and wine, malt beverages, apples for ciders or whatever. Um, but it does require that the agreement be with a licensed vendor holding a valid liquor license issued by the state of Alaska. And Pittman's Pub uh, does not hold a current license. Um, I'm not even sure if they have a fully vetted application before the ABC board or AMCO board for alcohol. Um, I think Mr. Scanlon stated that um, AMCO said if we didn't pass a resolution, they wouldn't act on the license. I think it's a chicken and an egg and I don't know how to get around it. Um, but um, that's one of my major concerns is that without knowing what the license premises is, without knowing what the fences are around it, um, I have trouble with this and I'm not a lawyer and Somebody's got to explain to me the difference between a franchise and a lease, because for us uninitiated people, they look exactly the same. So that's my two questions right now. Okay, hopefully the staff got those two questions out of there. Uh, Mr. White, looks like you want to answer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, at direction of Mr. Palmer, uh, he advised that for Eagle Crest, because of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, that when we were entering into an agreement uh, for exclusive use of an area, uh, that we could not do a, a lease, that a franchise was the appropriate mechanism. Uh, when we are entering into a non-exclusive use of an area, uh, the ski area does commercial uh, permitting. Uh, that was your second question. I think your first question was uh, about the chicken and egg. Uh, and I think we agree that that this is one of those situations where the applicant needs both AMCO and CBJ to approve the proposal. Uh, and we understand that AMCO won't act until they have something from uh, CBJ saying that we are um, going to do business with them, but I also understand from Mr. Scanlon that after the applicant goes through AMCO, that it comes back to the assembly for uh, approval. Mr. Scanlon's in the audience and it looks like the audit, the applicants are nodding uh, at this cryptic process. Madam Mayor, do you have a follow-up? manager point to where it says in this agreement that they bring it back? Because I didn't read that. Mr. Manager. Uh, Mayor, we might need, just need a brief at ease on that if we could have just two. All right, two minutes.
process. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so with liquor licenses, once they go through the AMCO process, then the city gets notified that this is going through the AMCO process. And there is a 60 day window in which we may protest the issuance of that license at that time. That protest is generally something that is triggered by staff reasons for protest, but in fact, it can be protested by an assembly member. It can be protested by a member of the public. It doesn't have to be originating from within staff for a protest. Um, but once uh, the license has gone through the AMCO process, the local governing body has a 60 day window in which to protest the issuance of the license. Very good, Madam Clark. Mr. Jones. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm familiar with that process, uh, and, and but that's not the same as what I heard was this agreement would come back. Um, generally, the assembly HRC committee is the one that reviews the liquor licenses, the new ones. They don't generally look at the premises map and compare it to the Eagle Crest Lodge or anything like that. So that I'm not sure that satisfies my concerns, but I appreciate that would be a separate process. And unless the assembly pays attention, including myself, um, they wouldn't realize that you have this franchise agreement as well. So I'll, I'll save my other questions for later. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Hale. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, 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 maybe I heard differently than Mr. Jones, but I, I thought, I didn't think that uh, Mr. Manager said this, the franchise agreement would come back. It's just that we will see this again as we see all liquor licenses in Juneau um, and they will come back before us. But if, if I could, um, if I could speak to Mr. Jones objection, if this is a chicken and egg thing, I think it would be a travesty if we didn't play our part so that AMCO could play their part. Um, that's all. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hale. Mr. Bryson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was just following along uh, Ms. Hale's lines again here um, that uh, even reading the bottom of this, um, that only two parties were interested. And then after they found out more details, these were the only people that were interested in conducting this business with Eagle Crest. Um, it, to me, would seem uh, counterproductive uh, to deny it at this point. Uh, let's let this group who wants to work with Eagle Crest, the only group that still wanted to work with Eagle Crest, uh, let's allow them to proceed. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. So we have a motion. Mr. Jones, are you maintaining your, object, your objection? Um, I am. All right. We have a motion and objection. Madam Clerk, will you call roll? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, for the passage of Ordinance 2023-34, Ms. Gladyshevsky. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jones. Oh. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Hughes Scandies. Yes. Ms. Hale. Yes. Ms. Mr. Bryson. Yes. And Madam Mayor. Yes. Motion carries six to one. Okay, moving on then. Um, to new business item 20. Um, I have to recuse myself for this because uh, the responsive bidder um, my son works for. So with that, I'll pass the baton to Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. This is uh, bid award BE22-202, bid award for Juno Gate 5 passenger boarding bridge replacement. Mr. Manager. Bids were open on this project on July 19, 2023. Bid protest period expired at 4.30 p.m. on July 20, 2023. Work generally consists of the removal and replacement of the existing passenger boarding bridge and fixed passenger boarding bridge walkway at gate five. I recommend you award this project to Dawson Construction LLC for the total amount bid of $1,705,705. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, Mr. Bryson, do you wanna move the item? 
I'll be more than happy to, Madam Mayor, Madam Deputy Mayor. I move the Assembly Award uh, bid BE22-202 uh, to Dawson Construction and ask for unanimous consent. Seeing no objection, so ordered. Um, Madam Mayor. No, I'll give you my microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, item 21, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is BE23-243. Bid award for Juno Rehabilitation Part 121 and slash 135 apron and RON parking apron. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Manager. Bids were opened on this project on July 25, 2023. One bid was received. Bid protest period expired at 4.30 p.m. on July 26, 2023. Project consists of heavy civil rehabilitation of the part 121 slash 135 parking aprons at Juno International Airport. I recommend award of this project to SECON for the total bid amount of $14,708,640. Thank you, Madam Manager. This is Hugh Scandies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the assembly award bid BE23-243 to Coalaska doing business as CCON and I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, that bid is awarded. Item 22, Ms. Gladyshevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would say that the uh, assembly reviewed all the applicants for the uh, senior citizens and disabled veteran exemption list and the hardship lift uh, individually. And I would move that the uh, assembly accept these late file requests and refer them to the assessor for review and action. And I'll read the names. Apologies to people if I've mispronounced your name. Uh, for the hardship list, it would be Betty Hallam, Cynthia Hudson, Gerald Bennett, Hernando Dumap, James Hammond, Joselle Carrillo, Juliet Carrillo Margalenes, Mark Hildebrand, Rita George, Robert McVeigh, Tessie Bales, Tessie Lanto, Theodore Mecklenburg, Melanie Melvin. And for the late file senior and disabled veteran exemption list, it would be Beverly Agler. Brian Olson, Carolyn Martin, Curtis Clothier, Dayton Canaday, Donald Jost, hmm, Jostelt, Erna Carruthers, Gregory McLaughlin, Harold Henriksen, Harriet Moore, Janet Madsen, Jerry Roundsley, Kathleen Lee, Rebecca Orford, Ruby Lamphere, Susan Burns, and Timothy Adams. And I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, we will send those to the assessors. Madam Mayor. Mr. Jones. Just had a question. Um, this seemed like a long list from what I remember from past. And I know Ms. Glashevsky at other times has questioned finance department about the way they advertise the deadlines and outreach. Um, if this list is growing, has, has that effort not resulted in a decrease in people missing deadlines? So is this a new group or is there anybody on here that's missed the last two or three? I just, and it's just a statement. I don't want any answers. I just think that, that this is the longest list I've seen in quite a while. Yeah. I've come in two or three at a time sometimes, and maybe over a whole next three months, mm -hmm. the list would get this long. But to start this way tells me something's not happening that Needs person's happen. eligible or not getting the word. Yeah. Mr. Mandry. Uh, Mayor, no, I, I also noted that. And so we'll review our process and see if, if, if there are improvements that can be made. Uh, it is the longest list that, that I've seen as well. Yeah, well thank you for that. Um, so that brings us to item 23, Grant. Oh, excuse me, Madam Clerk. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Grant Creek Homes' request for a land trade. And just to note, we do have um, 
Well, we did have Mr. Blydorn on. I don't see that he's still on with us. All right. We'll still go with Mr. Manager. The lands office received an application from Grant Creek Homes located at 4305 North Douglas Highway requesting a land trade. This land trade would allow disposal of approximately 3.22 acres of CBJ land to Grant Creek Homes and the acquisition of approximately 2.42 acres of land by CBJ from Grant Creek Homes. The application states this would allow the developer to avoid development in the Grant Creek stream buffer area and potentially create a small lot subdivision to provide housing within the CBJ. Planning Commission noted that the land acquired by CBJ would extend the 200 foot designated stream corridor surrounding Grant Creek in line with the 2013 comprehensive plan. Lands Housing Economic Development Committee reviewed this proposal at the May 2022 meeting, passed a motion of support. Planning Commission reviewed this application, the meeting on August 11, 2022, and recommended that the assembly approve this land trade. This application is moving forward after the applicant re-engaged in July. I recommend the assembly pass a motion of support to work with Grant Creek Homes toward the disposal of city property in accordance with 5309260. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. On um, this particular one, we would take public testimony if anybody in the room has public testimony. Seeing none, we will bring it back to the assembly. And I think it's at Ms. Hughes Candies, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the assembly pass a motion of support to work with Grant Creek Homes and direct the manager towards the disposal of city property in accordance with city code 5309260. And I ask for unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, so moved. All right, item 24. Madam Clerk, are you going to read that title? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think Ms. Wright is also coming forward, but the title is Appeal 2023 AA01 before the Assembly. Carla Hart versus Planning Commission regarding conditional use permit 2023 0003 Huna Totem Floating Dock. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So am I going to Mr. Manager or Mr. Manager? Clerk's office received a timely filed appeal from Carla Hart on August 4, 2023, regarding the Planning Commission's decision on use 2023-0003 related to Huna Totem's application for a floating dock. In accordance with the appeals code, the assembly must decide whether to accept or reject the appeal. If you determine after liberally construing the notice of appeal in order to preserve the rights of the appellant that there has been a failure to comply with the appellate rules, or if the notice of appeal does not state grounds upon which any of the relief requested may be granted, you may reject the appeal. If the appeal is accepted, you must decide whether the assembly will hear the appeal itself or if it will assign the appeal to a hearing officer. If you decide to hear the appeal yourselves, a presiding officer should be appointed. In hearing an appeal itself, the assembly would sit in its quasi-judicial capacity and must avoid discussing the case outside of the hearing process. If you decide to send the appeal to a hearing officer, the assembly may waive its right to reject or modify the hearing officer's decision, rendering the hearing officer's decision final and appealable to superior court without assembly comment. Additionally, in this situation, the assembly is not prohibited from discussing the case as you are not sitting in a quasi-judicial capacity, nor are you reviewing the decision of the hearing officer. At the February 1, 2021 Assembly Committee of the Whole, manager recommended that in the event of an appeal of this proposed development, that the, assent the assembly send the appeal to a hearing officer. An updated memo is in this packet. Attorney Wright recommends the assembly accept the appeal, consider assigning it to a hearing officer, and consider waiving final review under CBJC 0150140C. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And for those listening in, Attorney Wright has replaced Attorney Lane right at this moment. So 
Welcome. Um, so we're looking at two questions tonight, uh, whether we're going to accept the appeal and whether we're going to hear it or whether we appoint a hearing officer. Um, Ms. Glashevsky. I would move that the assembly uh, accept the appeal. Any? And I ask for unanimous consent. Objection. Mr. Bryson. Uh, yes, I'm going to object. Um, for uh, I disagree with the issues on appeal, I think is the reason why I can uh, object to receiving the appeal. All right, thank you, Mr. Bryson. Ms. Hughes Candies? Nothing on this motion. Okay, um, so at this moment, no one else seems to want to talk. So we have a motion and an objection. Ms. Hughes Candies. Madam Mayor, except I will, I realized after the fact. We've, uh, in my time on the assembly, um if there is a reasonably a reasonable amount of information contained a good faith argument construed generously in somebody's appeal application uh and they are timely and they paid the fee i've we've never uh in my time rejected somebody's appeal so i think it would be good precedent to accept this appeal given a good faith uh reading and then decide the next question uh, Ms. Glashevsky, you want to? Did you want to speak, or you? Uh, sure, I could speak. Uh, there, are, um, this is not about the merits of the appeal. Never is. It, there's only two reasons we can not accept an appeal: if there have been failure to comply with the rules, um, which there has not been, or if the notice of appeal does not state any grounds on which the appeal may be granted. So, uh, doesn't. That's why I think we need to accept the appeal. Uh, Mr. Bryson. Madam Mayor, I'm going to remove my objection. Okay, so we have a motion to accept the appeal and no objection. Is that correct? So we will accept the appeal. Uh, Ms. Glashevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd move that we uh, this be held or be heard by a hearing officer. We refer it to a hearing officer. Okay, and everybody understands what that means if we appoint a hearing officer. Ms. hughes -Gandies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I did have a question about this part. So we've uh, appointed a hearing officer plenty of times before. Uh, I think it's good to stay with the track probably that we set out, which from the beginning was to expect that there might be appeals either way and plan on appointing a hearing officer. I saw different language in this, and I just wanted to clarify because it says consider waiving the final review. So I don't think that I've ever seen that called out separately. And I just want to make sure I understand if we appoint a hearing officer, we're not automatically waiving our right to final review. That would be a third decision we would be making. Is that correct? Ms. Wright, Madam Attorney, would will let us know all those answers. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. So I'm just put it closer to me. Okay, so that's right. You actually have three decision points. Automatically appointing the hearing officer does not mean you're waiving. It's a third decision point you need to make tonight. My apologies, we have three. I just wanted to verify that. Okay, thank you. I have no objection to appointing a hearing officer. All right, um, so any objections to a hearing officer, appointing a hearing officer? Seeing none, we've answered that question. Okay, Ms. Glashevsky, you wanna go for number three? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so question, Ms. Hale. I would go for number three. All right, go ahead. Um, I will make the motion and then I'll ask a question if that's all right, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Um, I move that the assembly waive final review under CBJ code 01.50.140C. And I would like to explain why I'm making that motion. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we have uh, the assembly has not been free to discuss this project. And I think that um, we, in, in my perspective, the assembly owes it to our community to talk about what's going on and where the assam what, what the assembly members are feeling about the project. And, um, and we have not been free to do that because of the appeal that has been in place because we can't tip one way or the other about the project. 
given that that appeal is in place. It appears to me from Mr. Manager's recommendation that we will be able to speak more freely if we waive our final review and basically accept what the hearing officer says. And that's why I'm recommending that we do that. And perhaps Mr. Manager can clarify if I'm wrong or Ms. Wright can clarify. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll go to Ms. Wright for this one. Thank you. Um, what happens if we waive our rights and what happens if we don't? Thanks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, um, Ms. Hale, you're correct. Um, this came up, I believe, last week or or um, at the last meeting that you had. There was some conversation with Ms. Lane about whether there should be a conversation. There was a second meeting held at the Planning Commission, and you've got the Tidelands lease coming up potentially as well. And so the question came up, can we talk about this? As long as you're sitting in a quasi-judicial um, manner, you cannot talk about it. So you, you've said we're not going to be the hearing officer. That's step one. But if a hearing officer sends the decision back to you, you're still making a decision on it. By waiving it, you are no longer in a quasi-judicial situation. You can freely discuss it um, with Kuna Totem, with Ms. Hart, with anyone. You can go forward with the Tidelands lease and feel like you can have that conversation freely. No longer um, are you constrained. And there, it doesn't stop anyone from being able to appeal all of those rights are still there it just means you aren't going to comment on the hearing officer's decision any okay i see him still mr jones and Ms. Hughes candies uh thank you um, i'm gonna object for a series of questions um i talked to miss wright a little bit beforehand but um and and i agree with her analysis that you know if the hearing officer were to uh, rule against the appellant or the person appealing, um, then there won't be a hearing before the assembly and it goes straight to judicial to court. Uh, the last two times, at least, if I remember, appeals that the assemblies made a decision on when they went to Superior Court, rather than the Superior Court just reviewing the actions of the hearing officer, they reopened the case for evidentiary. And I would just remind you that if you talk about the project, if you write memos about the project, if you write emails about the project, just because you're not in a quasi-judicial mode, all of that is discoverable if the Superior Court opens the case back up for hearing. And Ms. Wright agreed that that was in fact the possibility. So while you may be free to talk, those words can come back against you at Superior Court. Secondly, you might give up the right and the hearing officer, his decision, her decision will be appealed to the Superior Court. You are, this assembly is, the person that goes to court because the hearing officer is making our decision. So if the appellant goes to Superior Court, you are the defendant in that case, not the hearing officer. And if you haven't read the decision, if you hadn't understood the decision, if you hadn't taken action on a decision, you're going into court to defend a decision you didn't make. Just something to think about. I realize the politics of this is, is different. Uh, and I realize there's lots of other things, but you have to consider that if the court opens it back up for an evidentiary hearing, everything you say in public now that you're free to say something, becomes part of a potential discovery at Superior Court. And Ms. Wright can correct me, but I think that's the, the gist of our discussion earlier. All right, hang on, Ms. Hale. We have Ms. Hughes-Candies in front of you. Can she respond to that? Were you responding to that? I know I, I was wondering. If um, Ms. Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So I'll just respond by saying I agree um, that there is a possibility if it goes to court, there's something called a trial de novo, which is a brand new trial. There are several decision points that have to be made by a judge to get to that. Um, um, yes, a new trial, no, a new trial. Yes, new evidence, no new evidence. This is a very lawyer answer, but absolutely it's a possibility. Um, and, and I agree um, that that could happen. Um, and, and I also agree you, 
going to something that Ms. hughes Scandi said earlier, I don't believe that we've presented this option to you ever before. Um, you are giving up a lot of authority to not be able to review, reject, send it back to a hearing officer. Absolutely, um, you're doing that. That's a decision, a policy decision you have to make. All right, Ms. Hughes-Gannis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, Mr. Jones and Ms. Wright's comments clarified the question I had in mind, and I'll just say, um, in terms of a recommendation this evening, the recommendation was to accept the appeal and then to consider those next two decision points, because I think these is a weighty decision for both of those, but I don't think we have from the attorney or the manager a recommendation on either of those. And we've come through two of three, but um, it would be my preference not to waive our, our decision, uh, that final decision. And I appreciate Ms. Hale's comments. Um, I think we all know what a political uh, item this is right now for this community. Um, but I think there are, there are other things that we can talk about with the community that are larger questions that are not specific to this project. And, and maybe other people are being asked a lot more of, you know, um, I'll, I'll just stop there, but I, I, it would be my preference and we'll see where this goes, but I would not want to waive our final review. Thank you, Ms. hughes Gannis, Ms. Hill, and then Ms. Glashevsky. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think that uh, I, you, you, both Mr. Jones and Ms. hughes Gannis make very convincing arguments, and it's a lot to waive if we waive that right. Um, I think that uh, I, I don't know how. Maybe I am asking staff since if we don't waive that right. We can't say anything about this. So I am asking staff to make sure that our public knows that because a lot of um, a lot of voices go out and a lot of accusations are made and I won't have the ability to address those. I won't have the ability to let my constituency know where I stand on this project overall. And it puts the assembly in a very difficult, very difficult position. So perhaps, Mr. Manager, is there a, a way, or, or Ms. Wright, is there a way that CBJ can communicate that to the public? Because there aren't very many people here, and you know, a lot of people won't hear. Thank you, Ms. Hale. One of you want to touch that? I mean, it seems <laughs> it's under appeal. We can't talk about it, but. Mr. Manager, maybe you can be more eloquent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have no doubt that the assembly and the public is going to want to talk about tourism and managing tourism and tourism growth. Um, I do not think that the the assembly has any need to talk about the uh, planning commission's uh, decision, the merits uh, of that decision, and the criticisms of it. Um, I I do think, and I and I. In the updated memo that we included in the packet, I think it's packet page 112, um, I do caution you about um, starting, thinking that starting to negotiate uh, a land lease while the appeal is in process. Um, I think that would be very confusing to the public. Um, and I do think that the two are linked in that uh, conditions that survive on the conditional use permit inform uh, conditions that you may or may not need to place on a land lease if you want to approve a land lease. Um, I do acknowledge that this would be uh, frustrating for the applicant. Um, they got a positive recommendation or a positive decision from the Planning Commission, no doubt want to move forward as they're able and, and how they're able, uh, but, but on the balance, uh, I think the best course of action is to um, let the appeal run its course, uh, even if it is frustratingly slow. So I, th I think, um, and I don't know that I have a strong opinion on um, the topic of uh, waiving your right to um, accept or reject the appeal. I can I can see it both ways. 
Um, I can also see um, it's possible that a hearing officer would make a decision that we don't agree with or we think causes other problems for implementing the land use code. So I, I, I can see it both ways. Um, and I'm not sure I have a strong recommendation on um, waiving that, that right. Uh, but I do believe that letting uh, the appeal run its course before engaging on the merits of conditions of a tideland lease uh, is the best course. And I do believe that we're going to talk about tourism a lot. Follow up. Yeah. Hang on, Ms. Wright, do you have anything to add to that one? Madam Mayor, just so one thing to let the assembly know, Ms. Hart, she's out of town, um, but she did communicate with me about, and I said I would let her know what happened tonight. I, I will say um, she took, she asked about communication and where things stand, and, and I answered her question. It was then put on Facebook. It was fine, and I'm not criticizing, like, but there a lot of the information is out there. There is a large Facebook page. Um, Ms. Hart is accurately um giving out that information that you are not allowed to talk about it right now. So I guess that that is one piece that it is getting out there on social media that you're constrained. So perhaps it should be on our social media also. Uh, Ms. Hale. Yeah, I, I would like a follow up and thank you very much for that, uh, Ms. Wright. And, and that's my question. If 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 we're not being able to talk about this, is there some way, for example, on our social media page, is there, and, and not just that, you know, we have, a, there's a lot of different avenues, too many in some ways, different avenues that people get their news. And so how, how is this going to be communicated that we have made the decision if we don't waive to not talk about this? Mr. Watt. Mayor, I think this, uh, whole arena of uh, issues merits uh, special effort in public information. And I, and I don't think there's any reason um, that we can't, um, or more than that, that we shouldn't put out an FAQ on what's happening, what's the process, why is it happening this way, uh, and amplify that uh, in the community. That would be great, thank you. Okay, and it, Mr. Smith, I was, oh, sorry, Ms. Gladyshevsky and then Mr. Smith. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. And so the reason I didn't move this is because we had no information and, and I'd never heard of waiving our right to, so it, it refers to a memo, but there's nothing in the memo about it. So um, have we ever done this? That I, I certainly don't recall it and I didn't even know it was a thing. So have we ever done it that anyone can remember? And then I have another question. Ms. Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Gladyshevsky, I don't believe we ever have. I did speak with Mr. Palmer about this um, and the options and some of the challenges. I don't believe you've ever waived this before. All right. Thank you for that. And and given, uh, you know, if we still kind of sort of can't talk about it, even that's just kind of removes my any impetus I might have for voting for your motion. So I I, I don't know that it helps us. Uh, we can talk about tourism all day long. We can talk about capacity. We can talk about it. We just can't talk about this permit for this dock. So. Uh, Mr. Smith and then Ms. Hale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The manager may have answered or said it in his in a previous comment, but I was just checking that whether or not we waive our right, does does that affect the timeline for the other pieces of the project? You know, the uplands or the or the tidelands or anything like that. Does it does our waiving our right, does it change that at all? Mr. Manager. Um, Mayor, I don't I don't think it substantially changes it. Um, well, I get to talk next because I haven't had a chance to talk yet. Um, so I appreciate Ms. Hale bringing this forward. It's certainly something different to talk about, but um, I would be cautious about waiving our final review. So I would object. To, anyway, Ms. Blaszewski. Just a, another question I wanted to ask uh, to the attorney regarding the issue regarding the permit and the lease and the um, chronology and whether one affects the other. Um, what would be your legal, not policy, um, recommendation or comment about the relationship between our ability to move forward 
uh, talking about a lease, which is different. I mean, it's just different. I mean, the, the planning commission does, do you have to turn left or right, or do you have four bus parking spots or not, or those kinds of things. And the lease is a different animal. So what's your opinion about the relationship between those and our ability to contemplate the second thing? Um, is right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ms. Gladyshevsky, from a legal perspective, there is no, um, you can move forward. From a legal perspective, there's no impediment to hearing it tomorrow. Um, policy perspective, totally different. That's up to you all about that, but it can proceed. Um, and, and I'll note, there's also a second planning commission decision that was made. So far, we don't have an appeal, um, but that proceeded as well. So there's, from a legal perspective, it could move forward. I agree. Thank you. I just curious. All right. Ms. Hale. Thank you. Um, I, I, I will remove my motion um, because I am convinced by the arguments that have been made. But I, I, if, if, for example, if the lease can move forward, but we can't talk about this permit decision, I, 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 I actually fail to see how we could talk about the, the lease if we can't talk about this as part of that conversation. Thank you. Um, okay. And uh, just remember the lease is the assembly's last chance to do anything. So I don't know that we would want to move forward on it while there's still an appeal going on. Ms. Hughes-Gannies, did you have anything to add? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. No, I was just going to say, I think that was a good question, but that's a policy thing. And I don't, I think with the approach we've taken tonight, I don't think that's a good idea. That's why I'm looking at the body rather than the staff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, so doesn't sound like we're doing anything further with this topic. We're going to accept the appeal and we're going to appoint a hearing officer. Ms. Wright, do you need anything else on this topic? No, oh, Madam Mayor, thank you. All right, so with that, we will move to staff reports. Mendenhall River flood report. Are you doing that, Mr. Manager? Are we bringing Ms. Kester coming back down? Mayor, I'm gonna uh, start this, this off and then we're gonna to pivot to uh, Director Kester, incoming city manager Kester, uh, quite, quite soon. So uh, obviously um, a tough, tough uh, event for the community. Uh, a lot of people lost um, a lot of property, homes, economic value, very, very hard situation. Uh, I think we have to be proud of the way that uh, neighbors and, and the city rallied around what we could do. Um, I think we have to be proud that uh, we're, for better or worse, good at standing up an emergency operations center in an emergency. Um, and we were, we were able to do a lot. We were able to communicate a lot. We were able to uh, provide a lot of information um, uh, to the public. Um, and, and Ms. Kester is going to give you an update on, uh, you know, where we're at on a number of topics, but, but, but I just think it needs to be said, just a, a hard thing that needs to be said. And that is that the, the city is not the solution to all problems. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, but we don't have the financial wherewithal or the programs or the code uh, to be the financial savior. Um, uh, deeply feel for the people that lost um, what, what in many cases is probably the biggest economic investment of their, of their lives. Um, and uh, it's really, really unfortunate. But but the city's not not the bank. We're not the insurance agent. We're not the disaster um, funding uh, entity. Those are those are roles um, for the state and the federal government, uh, even if they aren't performing to our hopes and expectations. And I, I just I think I just that needs to be said. Um, and with that, we'll uh, move over to Ms. Kester. Thank you, Mr. Uh, updates Mr. where we are. Ms. Kester. Thank you. I'd like to just brief the body a little bit on what we are able to do and be available for questions. So we still are having regular EOC meetings and um, trying to touch the areas that we can touch. And one of those is in coordinating permitting for homeowners. Uh, there's a lot of permitting agencies on the river, DNR, Army Corps, 
a fish and game and CBJ, which of course is our permitting is backed by FEMA and regs that FEMA makes us put into code uh, to maintain flood insurance. So uh, up until now, um, property owners have been operating under this uh, emergency declaration, this 30 day declaration, and they've done a great job, you know, notifying different agencies that they're doing work, but there remains a lot of confusion in what happens at the end of 30 days. Uh, and we want to make sure that not only do property owners know what happens at the end of 30 days, but they also know that in a year there won't be outstanding consequences for, for quick decisions. So uh, we had a really productive meeting uh, today, and Mayor Weldon was there, City Manager Watt was there, with the commissioners of DEC, Fish and Game, and DNR. To, to really try to tackle coordinating this permit question. And all commissioners were very um, collaborative and, and really want to uh, work with us. One of the, the uh, items that we had asked for uh, from DNR was to extend the emergency permitting from 30 days to one year. You know, the best time to work on the bank is not right now when we've got high water, when we've got uh, precipitation. Really, it's a winter activity. We're also, you know, we've gone through a lot of rock right now. Uh, CBJ is working on with extended hours at Stabler's Quarry, also working on getting the contractor access to more rock. So those are all reasons that we're working towards coordinating. So uh, those uh, commissioners have delegated to their uh, deputy directors and program leads to work with us on that. And we hope to be able to host a public meeting for property owners as early as next week, where we will have agency representation to answer some of those longer term questions uh, for uh, for property owners. And, you know, we're a property owner, too, that is uh, uh, with the Mendenhall treatment plant, with a number of storm outfalls that are struggling with some of these same questions. Uh, so that is permitting. Would you like me, Mayor, to, I have about four different topics brief like that. That was my longest one. Would you like me to pause for questions or keep going? Yes, let's pause for questions. Any questions on permitting? It was really nice to hear the commissioners say that they were all in basically and whatever they could do to assist with that. So that's good news on the on behalf of the homeowners. Just, just, just did you get agreement about the year or, or you're not sure from DNR or no? Uh, we got agreement to have staff work on uh, on formalizing that. So I, I think it was, you know, de devil's in the details, but we have uh, okay. a good good collaboration with the, the state. Thank you. Can I continue on? All right. Another byproduct of this emergency has been a lot of waste. And of course, early on, we worked with waste management to open up uh, the uh, landfill to property owners uh, really wasn't an efficient, it's not an efficient way self hauling to the landfill. And so we were able with the help of the state emergency operations center to do some targeted outreach to the neighborhoods that received that damage and to pick up trash that was put in the right of way. So uh, we were able to um, go door to door last weekend, uh, and uh, then subsequently Monday and Tuesday come around and pick up household waste and household hazardous waste. We haven't been able to um, pick up uh, C and D construction and demolition waste yet because of the potential for um, hazardous materials. So, but we are working with homeowners on a strategy for that, basically hiring a company that uh, that will treat the waste as hazardous. It's, it, it's not, at the volume we're looking at, it's not um, an insurmountable task, but we will be reaching out to property owners individually and we will be issuing a press release once we have that, um, that formalized. And those are expenditures that uh, the state has said will be eligible for reimbursement uh, through the disaster assistance, those kind of cleaning up trash that has made it into uh, the public rights of way. And so um, really been been nice to be able to work with the state on that. So that is my waste update. And then I'll move on to volunteer coordination. Any questions on the waste, Mr. Smith? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Director. Is there, there's a, there's, what is the limit for state public assistance? Like it's not unlimited. Right, like, anyway, we only will get so much to repair stone drains. And, and just, uh, anyway, it's like, there, anyway, we are making decisions on, on resources we can use from the state to be able to say, I, I appreciate we're taking care of the, of, of the waste and stuff. I just wanted to, mm -hmm. it's not a limited source of funds for 
public access to the state is out there. Director Kester. Thank you. I think a better way to look at it is there's very uh, limited things that are eligible for public assistance. And uh, because waste removal is one of those, um, we went ahead and leaned in as a small way that uh, that we could help residents. Um, it's a really a nominal expense when you compare it to things like bank stabilization at Men and Hall Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is also eligible for reimbursement. So I do think that, um, so I don't, I don't know the answer to your question of, is there like a dollar limit? There is a minimum threshold to request federal assistance, which is $1.3 million in damages. Um, and we believe we've met that with about $5 million in damages, 3 million of that we believe is um, reimbursable. So really this event has had a much harder uh, impact on individual infrastructure than public infrastructure. And so just trying to figure out a small way that we can through our coordination at least help people. Thank you. All right, Carry on. thank you. So the other item, um, I just wanted to mention, we've been, of course, coordinating with the uh, uh, State Emergency Operations Center, the SEOC, and part of their uh, work is to coordinate volunteer assistance. And so the, uh, we forwarded a press release from the state today that has information for different organizations that are helping out. Um, the United, United Way has a web link where you can both volunteer and request assistance. So that's where we're asking people to go if they need help. We also have links uh, in that press release to Red Cross, uh, to Team Rubicon. Team Rubicon is a volunteer organization that helps with, with manual labor, Salvation Army, which helps with goods, and Juno Community Foundation, which is collecting donations for area nonprofits. So again, uh, volunteer coordination is not something that CBJ does well, but I want to make sure that the assembly and the public knows that there are resources out there now stood up to help with volunteer coordination. All right, and then uh, the last item is just to give you an update of some of the other activities that the state is doing. They have set up a disaster assistance center at the Mendenhall Valley Library uh, to help applicants apply for individual assistance and temporary housing assistance. This is the financial assistance that's available for homeowners. Individual assistance is capped at 20,500, I believe, and temporary housing assistance has a, a sliding scale of uh, the number of months that they would provide assistance. So again, Again, uh, lots of qualifying factors to receive that. However, uh, they have received um, 85 applications for individual assistance, and that means there's 85 households that have been impacted by this event. So again, uh, they will be uh, Monday through Wednesday, so today, tomorrow, and the next day, they will be at the Mindenhall Valley Library, um, and then, of course, available uh, by phone and email after, after that. Also just wanted to update the body, uh, Governor Dunleavy did of course request a federal uh, uh, disaster. Um, so he pushed that up the chain and what a federal disaster would mean if it was declared for public assistance and individual assistance is the state would be able to apply for uh, reimbursement uh, or I guess CBJ and the state together would apply for reimbursement um, for public assistance through FEMA instead of just through the state. And if the declaration is awarded for individual assistance, it would raise, it would double the threshold for individual assistance. We've definitely been uh, coached to manage expectations on um, individual assistance. And of course we've seen multiple uh, devastating emergencies and tragedies just, just since then. So a, a time of great change. Um, FEMA will also be in town the uh, last half of this week doing that disaster public assistance uh, disaster survey. So we will be taking them around and showing them the, the um, public infrastructure and some of the private infrastructure that's been damaged. And again, I'd like to uh, just direct the listening public or the assembly to the CBJ website where we have um, uh, information and they can always ask questions at uh, floodresponse at juno.gov. Questions, Ms. Hughes-Candies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Director Custer. That's all wonderful um, information. I know staff is super, super busy with, I mean, we are doing these direct post after the fact uh, things that need to be done. I have been receiving um, public questions and uh, comments, and I'm sure other members have as well with concern about 
what the future holds and that this is the largest one. And I think at some point right afterwards, we had discussed having some kind of public, maybe like town hall setting where people could kind of grasp the like scale of the, what we're dealing with. Cause there's so many unknown variables. Um, we are still planning that, correct? I mean, I know that might not be your immediate, uh, right now there's more immediate, but if not, I, that's something I would like us to do as a city. Ms. Kester. Thank you. Uh, and I, I probably should have followed up with that information. We actually had a release of Suicide Basin over the weekend. So uh, it was very minor, 7.7, uh, .7, but you know, kind of a stark reminder for me that, uh, you know, this this still happens. So we uh, have scheduled a science, kind of, I, I call it the science panel for the Public Works and Facilities Committee on August 28th, just to start asking those questions. Um, we'll have representation from National Weather Service, NOAA, and USGS there to kind of learn a little bit about what uh, what the event is, how do we predict it, why didn't why, why was uh, National Weather Service not able to predict it? I don't think that's the like public meeting end all be all, but I think that's a really good beginning to the conversation because of course there's a lot of unanswerable questions that people have, like do we have the technology to mitigate this or prevent this, and, and we don't have those uh, answers now. But that will be a really good forum to launch and start planning for that bigger conversation. Okay, thank you. That does sound like a good start, and I would love it. Your mic's off, Ms. Hughes-Kenny. Let's try that again. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like a good start, and I'd love us to do like a public meeting at the high school or something. Uh, thank you. Ms. Hale. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, given that I live a block away from the river, um, I, I, and given that Suicide Basin released over the weekend, I'm just thinking that our time frame between now and next summer when releases occur again is incredibly short. So if, you know, what, what I said at one point was there's 32,000 people in Juneau, that means there's 32,000 different theories for how we should deal with this. But what I'd really like to do really soon is have people have like worldwide expertise, not just, I mean, I, I, our National Weather Service is great and, and our glaciologists out at the university are great, but, but is, there, is there someone else that can advise us? Is there someone from the Army Corps that should be part of this conversation and really sooner rather than later? So that's my question. Um, maybe kind of thinking about what kind of schedule we can be on so that we don't, end up it being July of next year and we don't have any answers. Thank you, Ms. Hale. I don't know if that was a question really or just a comment. <laughs> I, I actually would like to hear Mr. Manager has his hand up. All right. He's our engineer too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Mayor, I think it's I think it's a good question. Um, and there are a lot of people that have reached out uh our, our sense is we are developing um the urban yokelop experts here in juno um we're not aware of another community anywhere that monitors um yokelops uh in an urban area or or you know where where we have circumstances like this um we've had a, a lot of ideas thrown out there but I think the science panel is a good start. Um, I think um, I think we're open to suggestion. Okay. Um, quick question: You mentioned going to public works, and I would have to say all of this body is uh, interested. So I think instead of public works, you might consider the committee of the whole because I think we're all interested in nothing against the chair of the public works, but it seems to me we're all interested in that. Um, Ms. Huskin, I mean, no, I'm, are you, are you, I'm good. Mr. Bryson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I won't take any offense at that. I think having this uh, information at the committee of the whole, because I, I do believe that we would all uh, benefit from this. 
Um, as I've uh, sat through a few meetings, the one thing that I I wanted to just share with this body and anybody listening. So Juno hasn't, we didn't just sit flat footed. We've actually done some actions. And one thing that we did that uh, potentially had some of the most impact for our residents is adopting the national flood plan NFIP. Uh, there, we, we adopted it. And because the city adopted it and has it in code, we're able to get flood insurance in Juno at a, at the, the, I don't want to call it a reduced rate, but the rate that you get when your when your community uh, adopts the flood plan, um, and that came from uh, the River Road meeting. We got uh, information from the state, um, so that Juno has not been completely inactive in this, and that's one of the uh, positive things that we've done. Um, as we've talked about many times, how did we know that we would get double the previous record? of water coming down the valley. And so I think Mr. Water's right. The experts for Yaka Hops are going to be located here in Southeast. Thank you for the time, Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bryson. Um, Mr. Smith and then Ms. Hale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess just wanting to hear from that science panel as soon as possible, I guess, you know, if it's being planned for next week. If you can't reschedule for the cow for next week, maybe, I mean, I think people should just try to come to public works if we're not anyway just trying to move it as quickly as possible and it may not be able to reschedule in a week right but I, do we know that these people can show up at 7 p.m now instead of noon so anyway just a just a consideration for the assembly or it may just be a town meeting also so we'll let director kester uh, work on that <laughs> um ms hale uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Director Kester, you and I have talked a, a little about bank stabilization um, and bank stabilization. Uh, so, so one of the things that I've been hoping for but not wanting to bother staff for is some updates um, on an ongoing basis about what's going on. For example, since I live a block from the river, I'm very aware of where all this armoring is being done. And I actually know the word now, armoring. That's when they put the rock on the bank. So th there's an enormous amount of work that's being done. And as you said, the, the quarry is working overtime just to keep up with the need for the rock. There are some major gaps that make certain people very nervous that is not being done because for the most part, as I understand it, that armoring is up to the homeowner, the individual property owner, and they decide or don't decide whether they're going to armor. And as a community, I, I, I understand the, I understand why we um, don't just offer to do that. But as a community, if we could be, if 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 it looks like the river might reroute through one of those homes that's not armoring or not armored or one of those properties um we i i hope that we will be we will be um thinking about that and if i could just add i watched those trees come down and i watched that bank go and it was incredibly sobering and frightening and had we had that rain event on the day as i think you and i talked on the day of the yokelup it could have been at my house. So um, there's a lot of people that are affected by this. And, and I, I'm hoping we're thinking about that, that armoring question as well. Thank you, Ms. Hale. Anything further? Do you have anything further, Director Kester? Okay, we will, can everybody okay continuing on? All right, so to the mayor's report, um, I just have a couple things. Um, I took my mom up to Anchorage to see Hamilton this weekend. If you get the opportunity, please go. It was an excellent, excellent show. Um, on Tuesday, August 24th, from 4 to 6, the BRH is having their opening of the hospice and healthcare in the BRH gallery. gallery. So um, we've been waiting for that for a long time. So I'm glad that uh, BRH and Wildflower Court can make that happen. And uh, in fact, I think they're already starting to do a little bit of hospice care already. And if you hadn't seen the email from uh, Ms. Phillips, uh, Southeast Conference is September 19th and 21. If you're interested in going, please contact her as soon as possible. And at that, I 
done, so we will go to committee reports. Ms. Glashevsky, Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wrote down my Committee of the Whole things on a piece of paper that's somewhere in this pile. If you would uh, go to someone else, then I'll take it next one. Okay, well, we don't have finance here, so we will go to Ms. Bryson. Madam Mayor, there was no public works and facility meetings last time. The next one is this coming Monday for public works and facilities. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, housing, lands, housing, and economic development. Madam Mayor, somehow I blocked out that this is the evening, <laughs> the part of the evening where I've got my lands report. So if you give me just a sec, I'll bring it up. Um, hey, we'll come, we'll come back. We'll come back to you. Uh, I found my mess. And there. we'll go to Mrs. Glashev. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we had a committee of the whole meeting on August 7th and had a long agenda and uh, heard from many, many different reports uh, about energy financing, specifically on bill financing concepts that uh, were referred to the Public Works Committee. Uh, we talked about uh, accessory dwelling units and we heard that today. Uh, we heard an update on the tourism, uh, state of tourism in Juneau, and also amendments, some amendments for the tourism uh, manager's duties to Title III. Uh, we heard about Juneau School District funding and those issues that the state is now threatening school districts with um, and child care. So um, also we heard some of that today. So that's what we heard at the COW on the 7th and our next meeting COW is next Monday, August 28. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Gladyshevsky. Ms. Oh, Mr. Bryson, we'll come back to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I had the privilege of uh, chairing lands this uh, previous uh, uh, go round. Um, we did a uh, passed a motion to draft uh, for a foreclosure. Uh, we had a request for gravel uh, for the food bank. Uh, we did a motion to support of that. And um, notice of, um, oh, we discussed the hazard maps. Um, and that was the lands, housing, and economic uh, meeting. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. Mr. Smith, I know you're ready. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. And tonight's uh, Human Resources Committee, we heard um, annual reports from the Juno Commission on Sustainability, um, heard about the pair paid parental leave policy, um, saw a first draft of that, the change to the personnel rules and, and unanimously moved it forward to the assembly. So we will be hearing that as the whole body at some point soon. Um, we also made some recommendation on appointments. Um, the Human Resources Committee unanimously recommended to appoint Josh Anderson as the PRAC representative seat and Philip Hibshin to the Jack representative seat to the Youth Advisory Board beginning immediately and ending August 31st, 2025. So I'm, I move that the assembly accept that recommendation any, and ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, they are appointed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We also recommended unanimously, and I move the appointment of Tom Ratecki, Elizabeth Ballstead, and Missouri Smith the Youth Activities Board public seats for terms beginning September 1st, 2023 and ending August 31st, 2026. And I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, Ms. Smith was attended Hamilton at the same time I did. So it's Smite. Smite, that's, that's right. right. Thank Sorry. you. Um, that's how I know her. <laughs> the Human Resources Committee recommended, oh. hmm. uh, the, the Human Resources Committee recommended and I move the appointment of David Teal and James Powell to the Juno Commission on Sustainability for terms beginning immediately and ending June 30th, 2026. And I ask for unanimous consent. Any objection? Seeing none, they are appointed. That's all I had, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hale, do you have anything to report on the assembly school district facilities? I can't remember if we've had a meeting since our last one. Um, Yes, Madam Mayor, we met some time ago, and I can't remember exactly when that was. And um, we uh, we made uh, an executive decision. We were trying to get two meetings in September to hand off a really clear and strong package for the next committee that is going to be 
um, taking this forward. I think we still will hand off a clear and strong package, but we are not doing two assembly meetings or two joint school meetings because our staff is like up to their eyeballs in other work. So our next meeting is the 26th of September, and that's going to be the last meeting um, for this assembly year. Thank you, Ms. Hester. Thank you, Ms. Hale. All right. Did I miss any committees? Okay, we'll start with Mr. Bryson. Uh, thank Liaison you. Liaison reports and competence questions and concerns. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, at the Docks and Harbors meeting, uh, Chair Etheridge was reappointed to continue being the chair of Docks and Harbors. And uh, the most notable thing of that Docks and Harbor meeting, uh, Matthew Mickelson was uh, pointed out or uh, acknowledged as the employee of the quarter for Docks and Harbors. Uh, at the campus council meeting, um, the most noteworthy thing was uh, enrollment is up 15% at UAS. I got to take a jet boat tour uh, up the river uh, on the Tuesday after the Yakalhop event uh, with uh, Senator Murkowski, Representative Hanna, and Representative Story. And uh, that was a very informative trip. Uh, participate in the River Road Neighborhood Association meeting that uh, had a uh, state presentation. It provided a, a tremendous amount of information. And uh, at the Glory Hall uh, meeting, uh, they're doing a task force to find out what to do about the willfully non-compliant that are still causing problems in the Valley neighborhood. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. Ms. hughes -Gandys. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We saw some of what Eagle Crest has been working on with the franchise agreement this evening. Um, right now, the focus is on recruitment for the winter, the next season. Um, it was woefully understaffed and uh, quite a stretch to get through last season. So we're really hoping to staff up in a stronger way this season. Uh, they're experiencing postings where they'll get 500 views on a job listing and then they'll get one application. So hoping to get off to a stronger start. Uh, engineers are back at work on design with the gondola, but no construction expected till next summer. Um, I met with the, I don't have dates for any of these. <laughs> I met with the Chamber of Commerce when I was uh, had to zoom in from Homer. Um, they were excited about the hiring of Director Kester for our next city manager. They were pleased with that. Um, we talked about tourism, generally speaking. Um, Travel Juno was there to give information on their end from the issue with the city buses, and they continue to push out information and try to, they're just trying to do an education initiative to say, here are some other things, please don't do this with the city buses, um, which seemed to be helping maybe a teeny bit, and taking off that pressure from the drivers. Um they could express some concerns about the city's approach and the language we use when we're talking about tourism. And so they just communicated that generally. I was at the River Road meeting with Mr. Bryson and Mr. Jones. Uh, and I really, I just want to shout out Tom Matisse, who was there. And he did an absolutely wonderful job. Of, it was compassionate and helpful and knowledgeable and it's kind of an impossible role when you're talking to a bunch of people whose biggest investment in their life, you know, is hanging over a cliff or they you know, that the insurance is not going to make them whole. And Tom Matisse did a, a really wonderful job. So I really appreciate that. Uh, it was a pleasure to attend the summer session in Homer uh, for AML as a Juno representative. That was nice. Um, and I think we haven't had an assembly meeting since then. I went to the Telephone Hill meeting, and that was, I guess I, I'll make an assembly member comment just to say um, some of the comments that were received from the public were kind of along the line of, and I've communicated this to Mr. Blydorn to communicate with our contractors, but they sort of were looking for the do nothing option when I think this assembly, we want to do things right and we want community input, but that's not what we're setting out to do. So I want to make sure that that's communicated and we're not doing public process where we don't, it's like they weren't mentioning that, oh yes, we'd like to do something with this property. Um, so I'm just putting that seed in your head. And if that's too, if that's not clear, you can talk to me afterwards, but just want to make sure 
we're clear it's sort of the same thing as with the airbnbs like you guys might want to regulate them we've said we want to maybe regulate them in a public meeting and i think it's kind of the same thing with telephone hill um and that concludes my report well thank you miss hughes candies mr jones do you have anything uh, not a whole lot it's been uh relatively quiet for me with the assembly, but I did attend the River Road. Um, and I, I don't know how much you know about how the Red Cross operates when they set up a disaster response, but basically the last two weeks, I've been pretty much full-time at the Red Cross. Part of my duties um, was to be the Red Cross representative at the City Borough EOC. So almost every meeting that Ms. Kester was at, I was there. And I just wanted to comment that she did a masterful job uh, as the head of the EOC. She and Denise both um, have managed that process very, very well. Um, and uh, pretty much Red Cross effort is, is done and I probably won't be attending much more than just I attended today. Um, I won't attend the meeting on Thursday because I'm gonna be at chamber listening to Mr. Watt. Um, and um, that'll be much more interesting than the, the CBJ EOC. But um, I, I did tour uh, the area on the Sunday after, um, and I walked around the area at least three other times uh, since they've been working on it, um, did attend the community meeting at River Road. So um, I think the, the city has done the best they can without setting too much precedent for the next disaster, um, which is going to come. And it may not be the river, it may be a landslide. I mean, we had one the Sunday night uh, after that, just up on Star Hill. Um, and uh, if people complain about not being able to predict the eucalypt, <laughs> you're never gonna decide which which mountain's gonna come down on you. So, um, but other than that, that's my report, Madam Mayor. But I just wanted to really compliment Ms. Kester. I think she did a masterful job. Of course she did. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The new Parks and Rec Advisory Committee met last week. Um, they appointed, um, oh gosh. Uh, anyway, they, they have a upcoming, um, uh, they have an upcoming retreat on September 16th um, and they appointed Oh God, what is the last name? <laughs> Chris Myrtle as chair, thank you. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, upcoming September 16th, um, then they'll take a month off due to scheduling conflicts with the election, but then they're gonna be doing um, meetings every first Tuesday nights, kind of as they had done in the past. Um, the Juno Com Commission on Housing and Homelessness had their retreat on Thursday. I was unable to attend due to a, some work travel, but looking forward to getting some information back and, and hearing more and can report more about what was um, discussed there. Um, I know the emergency shelter, um, excuse me, the um, warming shelter was definitely an issue. Um, that is what I had for you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Ms. Hale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've attended quite a few Bartlett meetings lately. Um, <laughs> um, I attended the airport board meeting on the 10th of August, and we saw some of the things that we had talked about um, coming through. One of the one of the topics that was uh, that was brought up was that some of the estimates for projects had come in much higher than the actual bids, and I think in part um, that's due to uh, everyone who's having to estimate project costs. Is, is estimating high to kind of keep up with what they've seen. So it's very, very volatile right now, but some of them were really big savings. Um, I attended the Juno Commission on Aging uh, meeting on the 15th. I've been communicating with Mr. Smith on, on uh, perhaps some of the uh, sort of work products that the Commission on Aging is producing to kind of go through the Human Resources Committee. One of the one of the difficulties I think that we're having is that the role of that commission, as is with many commissions, is to advise the assembly. But 
what form does that advice take? So um, I've been kind of back and forth with Mr. Smith, uh, trying to move that forward. And I am sure there's other things, but that's all I have right now. Thank you, Ms. Hale, Ms. Glashevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, along with the mayor, are on the Alaska Municipal League board. So we were in uh, Homer uh, at a meeting. Uh, it was really good to hear from other communities and um, all across Alaska with very similar, in some cases, super similar issues. Always great. Uh, I then took the opportunity to take a drive around vacation which was unique, you know, fun to drive the roads <laughs> we went on the Kenai. Well, and um, also then wound up seeing opening night of Hamilton. So uh, I'll give another shout out to that fabulous show. Um, the Juno Commission on Sustainability met. I wasn't able to go. Uh, the issue of advising the assembly, you know, same thing for them. Where, how do they um, get in to our process it's not always clear uh, but if you want to know what they've been doing uh, please do read the packet from the human resources committee their cu couple page report is very uh succinct and uh is good is good reading um and uh, that's all i have madam mayor oh and i, I missed the river road and all those meetings because i was out of town and um, thank you to the some of the members who were able to go. And I know only three of us could go. So if people are wondering why everybody else didn't show up, it's um, only three could go anyway. And but I wasn't here. So thanks. Thank you, Ms. Dad. Thanks. I I also chose not to go so that the three members that did go could go. So yeah. Um, well, all of us, they jumped on that pretty quickly and uh, not to violate the Open Meetings Act. Uh, that's why many of us didn't try to go also. But it was also my sons last night in town. But uh, even if I'd wanted to go, those three jumped on it very quickly. Um, anyway, um, I missed a couple things. I, too, went to AML down in Homer. It was lovely to drive down there. Beautiful scenery. Um, Put my plug in for Juno Access now, um, but uh, one of the topics of conversation was the deed letter that the Juno School District got. So um, many uh, um, communities are quite concerned with that, and so um, they are checking in with us pretty regularly on that. Um, and then I totally forgot that I got to meet with uh, Secretary Bu <laughs> Buttigieg with uh, members of the staff. Um, the city manager and the uh, assistant city manager and Ms. Kester and Mr. Yucatel and Ms. Watto. So we got to talk for him about an hour, everything transportation. Um, he's definitely a delight, um, very eloquent, uh, very nice and uh, extremely smart man. So, and uh, uh, we did have him taste one of the local, local IPAs. So that was kind of fun. Um, with that, um, I don't think I have anything further other than happy Senior Citizen Day and uh, be nice to your seniors. So um, anything further? Seeing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>